Uh, we have the planning and this session with the planning and zoning board. And of course, I appreciate everyone coming out, uh, visitors. But for right now, this is going to be this is our, our planning and zoning board. So they are having an official workshop uh, as a board. So I'll turn it over to the chairman to just um, officially start the meeting. Thanks for coming. Um, I'm officially starting the meeting. <laughs> January 29th workshop of the Bureau Beach Planning Zone. I'll turn it over to you, Andre. There's well, the camera. Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, Listen, uh, in terms of the camera, try to stay on the images and not on me because of, you know that's that's really what's important. Well, welcome. <laughs> I don't know what this is our seventh uh, official meeting, something like that. Um, there's another one tonight. I actually, I'm sorry if I didn't greet you. I wasn't aware there was a meeting. I was actually, uh, uh, my whole head is uh, uh, on the supposed young people who will be coming today to the Walking Tree Brewery. And it's almost like they've been holding back, sort of letting me have it. And they said, uh, be prepared, because they're all, they're all either excited or angry. Um, and um, so I've had a lot of, uh, uh, as I said, seven meetings. The, I'm trying to sort of edit to see what affects you because you're a technical and political group and not so much a I, for a second. I don't really know who you are or okay. what, what your... Um, oh, you didn't um, go through this process. How many members of that? Okay. So you can explain who you are. Okay. Uh, my name is Ernesto I'm an architect. Um, uh, since 1979 and a town planner and uh, who normally works for the private sector. For example, I did Windsor, which, we, which you must know. But what we generally do are new towns. They're diverse in use and diverse and they're walkable and they're ideally diverse in income, although they never end up that way. They all gentrify. Uh, many years ago, um, the the, uh, there was an incredibly good, good planner of West Palm Beach who, uh, who lived in Stewart, Florida. And he said, you must come fix Stewart, which was dead at the time. Uh, this was many years ago. And I said, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know about old downtowns. And he said, I don't care. You'll never get a permit again if you don't come do it. <laughs> so I, I, I came in out of ignorance. And it worked really well. Actually, I came in with a private sector mentality. I knew what developers had to see. And I just did what I knew, and everybody said, oh my god, this is so innovative. It's so innovative that you're actually, and it worked super well. It was immediately, it just took off, and you can see what Stewart is now. And I think what I bring to the table is an understanding of the people who actually build things in America, okay? And also, the experience of what it's like to go through the, through the process of getting a permit in America. You know, which is really astonishing. So I know that stuff, and so I tend to um, to have a, a, a different way of doing things. Um, my office is um, now it has been handed over to the next generation for very skillful people, and I am only asked to work on very difficult projects. <laughs> they do all the cool projects; I do the difficult ones. You're considered a very difficult project. <laughs> and one of the reasons is that um, the, the, uh, the interview process is so incredibly contentious. The last contentious moment was in the interview process. The last uh, seven meetings that every time I've been in here has been extremely smooth. Just, it just worked out, you know. And I think it's the process. First of all, uh, there has never been an outreach like this one uh, because of the lead time and Christmas, over two months of, of interaction in the internet has yielded 6,000 people tracking this, 3,000 people participating, which is a questionnaire, 1,000 people actually bothering to write, and that's a big, that's a big deal that you actually put out and, and write and post things. So when I arrived only a few days ago, Monday, I arrived Sunday night, obviously, and people said, how are you working so quickly? Well, what do you think? I have been thinking about this for two months, and I have been, you know, I have already, I have a huge amount of information by the time I arrived, so we were able to draw the first day. <laughs> so, 
by the first evening on Saturday <coughs> night, we already had a proposition. And so the general, uh, the general feeling wasn't, it's too early to know, but adjustments. You know, have you ever thought that the road, that the, that the skate park actually makes noise and you're gonna keep it, away, keep it away from the people who are listening to music and you know, we want restaurants of this kind and so forth. So unlike most charrettes in which you spend a lot of time, I mean a lot of time making notes, we just went ahead and started designing. And so it's very advanced. It is so advanced that we were able to present our very uh, visible things, real ideas. And we have enough time to actually change them now, to really change them. You know, it isn't just, hey, you know, this is linear, and we're going to end, we have to present by Friday night. No, actually, we have enough slack in the team that, it, that we can change things substantially. What was in changing things slightly? But, frankly, after lunch today, we realized that there were some really good points being made about separating things and so forth, because we tried to put everything in one place because of human activities, you know, the skateboarders and the music people and the, and the yacht people and the sailing people. And then we realized, we were made to realize that actually many of them are incompatible. That the big yacht people don't get along with the sailing people that the kids make incredible noise in the skate park do not, they will interfere with the, with the, no, you know, with the noise and so forth. So we have a new plan that you will probably not see unless you stay here for an hour and a half, uh, that actually separates things. But I can show you the old plan, okay? Um, without spending a lot of time on it, because uh, as I said, it's gonna change. Um, and uh, I should ask, how many people have been to a prior meeting at all? All those people. Um, I have honestly, I have not met any opposition to speak of it. It was not even my, the people in the office believe. And it's because we're just responding. And if there's, um, if there's opposition, it's from, some, it's from somebody, somebody says it wasn't us. You know, some kind of ancient view, but it wasn't us. And so last night, we went to see the neighbors. The neighbors are the people of the north and the south, residential areas. North and the south of the site. This is the site, north and the south. And that, of course, is the most contentious because they're the ones that are most bothered. And I think anybody who is there will know that actually, first of all, there was no, there was really no opposition and when when any arose, we were able to either explain or or say we'll change it for you. And at the end, there was literally, literally, literally no opposition, which is unheard of with neighbors. Part of the reason is that I tell them the truth. Like for example, when you make, I, before they tell me there's going to be a traffic problem, I say there's going to be a traffic problem. You already have a traffic problem. The traffic's going to get worse, and it's not the fault of this project. It's the fault of the growth of the county. So, you know, you get that over, you know? And so everything that I know is gonna come up, I just say it unapologetically. This is just a problem that you have. It is going to get worse. Don't worry about that. And it has never gotten less bad. Traffic has always gotten bad since 1940. No matter how many highways they build, the traffic is worse. And let's not load this up with that problem, because it's not a problem we're bringing here. A lot of the uh, things that I think we're, uh, are necessary to, to tell people is to make them smarter is that this is a town that actually is growing. Since 1980 to now, the city of Vero has probably grown, grown from 1,000 to 1,500 people. Nothing. All the growth is in the county that's now pushing 170,000 from virtually nothing. So what that does, when they know that, they say, hey, I'm, we're not the problem, you're not the problem, it's the county and we don't have jurisdiction. So I'm always actually trying to give people the facts, which actually makes them smarter. It makes them smarter like that. We talk about insurance, we talk about all sorts of things. And I think that conversation has been very adult. Um, 
What I have not spoken about is the process by which this gets implemented. And where I think you come in. The, our contract is written that we are to deliver five scenarios. And I think it, it's important to know what they are. One scenario is to present to people what happens if you do absolutely nothing. You do nothing. There's too much political contention. You pay for a chain link fence, you pay for a cop, and you mothball it for the next generation that gets more better. By the way, it's not just you. You always have to talk about that scenario. People have to understand what happens if you do nothing. Okay. The second scenario is very clearly, what do the neighbors think? Only the neighbors. Because the neighbors are not the citizens as a whole. Almost all of the bad planning in this country comes from people confusing the neighbors who are vested interests with the community as a whole. They're not the same. The neighbors don't ever want anything. Right? But the community as a whole might need something. And so I said, I'm going to propose a scenario of that, what the neighbors think. Then there's going to be a third scenario, which is what does the community as a whole think? Not just the neighbors. And that, of course, in your case, brings in the county. So when we opened up the internet, the county, we, we, we opened it to everybody. We did not make a distinction as though you were from the city or the county. You know, they just, just came in, okay? Third scenario was the community as a whole. Very important to not confuse with the neighbors. The fourth scenario, and this is the one that I'm not gonna get, is what do you actually think? Publicly stated, and the elected officials, and the city employees. And I've never gotten that out of anybody because the position, the official position of the people, like yourself, is we're here to listen. And this I profoundly disagree with. We were elected to decide. The elected officials were elected to decide, okay? And somehow, all over America now, the elected officials, who well, actually know very well what they would do, never tell me. Never do. You're supposed to be the public service instead of the leaders. So I can't submit that scenario because I can't get a word out of anybody in terms of, you know, what is the planning? What is the planning? What do you actually think? Or what do the elected officials think? Zero. Like that. Part of, part of it is the, uh, the fact that you're always on camera and you're always uh, observed and all this terrible uh, stuff. But I don't get it. <coughs> out of uh, you, and then the fourth scenario, which is astonishing. Does anybody care what I think? You know, the expert that, you know, I get a lot of praise, you're the expert at everything, nobody ever asked me what I think. In fact, I was told, just you listen. Because you're from Miami and you're highly suspect. <laughs> that are gonna change Vero, and we don't want your ideas. And I have actually such a funny thing to be asked to not have any ideas. That until you bring up an idea, I don't, I don't have it. And then somebody, for example, brings up an idea just before lunch, and I said, thank you, thank you for actually having that idea, because now I can, I can draw it. So this sounds funny, but it isn't. This is a, this is a crisis in, in planning, in that everything is actually, so what, how do I deal with the fact that the citizens are empowered, highly empowered, it's all about that. What I try to do is clarify and educate. And I tell them straight out, just because you walked in the door doesn't mean you know anybody. But if you come to these meetings and you ask questions, I'm infinitely patient so that you become experts. And I spend a lot of time actually saying, you really have to become experts because it's actually the decision's up to you. And so that's what I actually offer. It's a kind of expertise to the citizens who then come in. And, uh, and then they, they make better advice. And our report will have the five scenarios in a very clear thing that actually, so you understand clearly the pros and cons of everything. And then I think that the political decisions will be wiser. So that's the process that you're in. But there's one more thing. It turns out that there isn't a clean one, two, three, four, five scenario. 
Right? For example, the, the residents of both sides wanted everything. In fact, the people over here, when we told them what there was, they actually said, we want the pedestrian bridge over and make sure we get golf carts on it. <laughs> so instead of wanting to disconnect, they wanted to connect. So there isn't a separate, there isn't a separate plan for them. And it was almost, I mean, it was almost laughable. But you're supposed to be the opposite. <laughs> and he actually said, actually, we want a golf cart because it sounds cool. Okay, so, so the way it actually breaks out is we're going to actually submit zones. The five scenarios will be there are three, there are two ways to do the power plant. There are three ways to do the waterfront. There's one way to do this park. There's two ways to do these tanks. There's two ways to do this. There are five ways to do that. So you're going to get a series of scenarios, but they're not whole scenarios. They're plug and play. And what you can do is actually say for scenario for W5, West 5, which is the south parcel, we want to do the one that actually raises money for the community. Excuse me. The one that's actually financially best for us so we can spend the money somewhere else. You can decide that. Or you can say, no, uh, we want to build a parking garage there. That can't be more different. You can end up with an extra $2 million or you can be in the hole $4 million. You know? So I'm just like, here it is. You, you choose. Which one of the two? Because all of these ideas came in. Now, I would also recommend, uh, by the way, I recommend you don't spend $4 million in a parking garage nobody's ever going to use. And I recommend that you sell it get the $3 million bucks and actually get on with something else, that's going to be a recommendation, which you will see all far. Obviously, this power plant uh, has incredibly, uh, uh, very, very interesting potential in terms of a, of a conference center. It's a very cool place inside and out. But some people also want it gone. And the funny thing is that somebody will take it off your hands and it ends up being rather neutral. Right? You know, I'll pay you enough. That actually doesn't cost the city at all to get rid of it. So there isn't even a burden to get rid of it. The, the problem is that nobody has an idea what to do when it's small. Okay, now we're done. What do we do? Oh, well, we don't know. So, but for me to decide, I, I will just do both scenarios there. The sailing club has um, probably just one scenario because everybody loves it. And um, um, the only difference is that they want the whole thing. <laughs> and we say, well, maybe you don't. You're going to share with the restaurants and things, you see. So we, we do that. So the sales club will have a couple. One of them, and actually, I understand why they want the whole thing. It, it's very complicated what they do. So they will get mostly what they want, but not everything. Uh, over here, there are different scenarios. Like for example, these are two very beautiful tanks. First rate concrete contractors. One of them is the best concrete contractor in the United States, one of them is the second best. If you look at them, they're just glorious structures. Of course you can get rid of them, but also something can go inside. Anything from a climbing wall to a black box theater to the meeting to a meeting hall, you know, there are things like that. So we will actually say, look, you can get rid of them, but you can also put things in. And we'll show you that. We'll illustrate that. So anyway, at the end, this will be, you'll have a choice. Um, there'll be a lot of choice. And uh, people know this. I have, I've actually been talking about this. But I would like to talk about one more thing. In some ways, I'm leaving behind a real can of worms. Because I actually don't have a, 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 a single recommendation. Unless you absolutely ask me, what do we do clearly? What I do is I leave, you know, these are all the things I've asked for, good luck. Okay, which is really, I would not recommend that, but that's what I was asked to do. Because I can solve things and I can be the least popular person when I leave and you can be popular. But no, I'm going to be the most popular person because everybody gets what they want. And then you're going to be unpopular because you have to make tough decisions. And that's weird. I've never done that before. In which you just want all the choices left behind. You want the scenarios. I don't think that's a good idea. 
I think I should be unpopular and solve everything, because I don't have any political pressure. But particularly the, the people in the council do have political pressure, and I'm leaving the can of worms for them to decide. In which case, what I recommend <coughs> is that you pass all the plans in principle, boom, immediately. <coughs> and then bring up the most popular and get on with it, the one that's the least contentious. And then one that's actually the most people agree on, get on with that. And then the least popular, maybe it'll never happen. But what I would recommend is that instead of having the toughest decision, let's say the boat, boat launching ramp, which is many people hate, but some people want, that would hold up everything. Just to, so the toughest thing holds up on the popular one. What I would do is pass it in principle, and then one by one have the planning department bring them up to you, the easiest first, and you approve them, and then you let the less popular ones happen later. I have done that several times. Uh, last uh, month I did it in Erie, Colorado. And basically I presented the next public meeting, they pass the plan in principle, with no opposition, because it was just in principle, it all comes up for examination, but in pieces. And I did the whole town center for that town. It wasn't a little bit here. And uh, I did it for Charles, Louisiana, the very night that I presented. Uh, they passed it that night. It was, it was, a, it was a, uh, a posted meeting. They passed it, and then they did it one by one. And actually in Stewart, the night I presented, they passed the plan. So this is something you should pass. My recommendation to you guys is you set this up to pass the plan as soon as we deliver it to you, and then you take it apart one by one and get on with it. And uh, so that's the politics of it. Just uh, I haven't spoken about this before, but that's 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 what we're doing. We're and now I can show you the plan. And so forth. You might have questions. <laughs> I hope it makes sense. I was curious about um, your outreach to the neighbors. How did you do that? They were, um, who was there? Outreach to what? To the neighbors. How did exactly we get them there? We went to the HOA organizations. We went to some of the people who lived at the, um, in the Fingers. We went to the owner of the, uh, Okay, remember that the neighbors the here. Of Fair Lane yeah. and uh, in the newspapers. Kirina actually ran the outreach for the last yeah. few months. So, so, how many articles have been in the paper? Do I have to count? At least 20. So, there's newspapers, Facebook, social media, driving people to the Speak Up page so that they can, yeah. you know. That's the, every community as a whole. Right. That's the community as a whole. That's the community as a whole. But reaching out directly, we went directly to those neighbors. Okay, now remember the neighbors here are super simple. Because not everybody, it's like the people who live to the north and the people who live to the south. It's like it's like a single age away. So very this is actually this time very simple. And there were several hundred people last night, weren't there? Yeah. For both sides. That's who was there. Because okay. I know in uh down Parkland there's nine uh, homeowner associations. Here? Park uh, to the north. Nine. Nine homeowner associations. Right. right. Yeah. Yep. I was curious. Well there are plenty of them there. Yeah, but I didn't ask uh, whether you were even in the home association. There's always people that are unexplainable. <laughs> For you, what are you doing? But generally, we think it was done. And we went to them. They didn't come to us. We went to their, to their house. Yeah. And I want to keep up in mind, in terms of just benchmarks, this is what I keep telling the City Council Steering Committee on this project. The vision plan, which I think this board was, you know, it was involved with, only had about 500 people involved in the entire process, and that's what the report says. Near the time, though, that's what the report says. The um, and then the Art Village plan, which is similar to this, followed the charrette process that we're doing here. That had 125 people, and we far and have exceeded that participation. Even in the meetings to date, I think we're. I think we're over close to a thousand people already participating in these meetings, and then these are live, the live, 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 live sections, and then what's been going on online. The fact that it was close to ten thousand have viewed the website. No, six, 
6,000 have viewed the website. No, 11,000 have viewed and 6,000 have engaged. Oh, okay. So some people have not actually taken time to engage. They've just visited, read, and left. But thousands have also engaged. It's still amazing and shared how many ideas. people. So I didn't heard of it. Like there were three this morning, quite young people who said, what's going on? <laughs> you know, like, yeah, well, you know, but they came in and they were nice and it was great. But you can't ever reach them. But I think the engagement's been there in this project. Yeah, it's been exactly after 40 years, this is the most. Mm -hmm. Anybody's ever Oh, and then don't want much of it. We spent two Saturdays doing <laughs> tours of the plant so everyone could see the site and see the building in person. And there was a thousand people uh, there uh, for the two Saturday tours. And only 16 injuries, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, no accidents. Because this is a tough place. <laughs> it's a tough place. So that's the participation, but you know, at some point, honestly, the council is going to have to stop saying uh, that we just want to do the list. We just want to listen, and you have to decide. You know, to understand, it's like okay, rubber hits the road now. Decide, and it's, it's never. Hopefully, it's easy, but it has to happen. It has to happen. Um, some of the stuff. With, I have to say, just politically, one of the things that astonished me. Is also the most popular, the least popular. The least popular was anything that made income. I thought I was in East Germany. <laughs> Where I also work. And there, you just order up what you want. You know, like a, a covered pool, a high school, and you know, the charrettes are great. You just find out what you want, and then the government pays for it. But uh, I became started getting really worried. Um, and I was about the only one who said, who's going to pay for this stuff? And then finally I met your city finance director, finance director who said this. Uh, when the utility was sold, this $21 million that was actually acquired. And uh, um, it can be spent on this, although it can be spent on anything. I just have a recommendation on that, which I want to give you. It's actually short. But, um, but then they said, we've got money to build things, but we can't get anybody to maintain and police, There's, this city has very little money to keep things going. And so one of the agendas here is the software of when we actually propose something. Okay, when we actually propose something, for example, there's two things that are here because I think they can manage this. The sailing club can manage a whole bunch of activities beyond sailing because they're good at it with you already. So we said skate park, I mean, wouldn't you get on the skate park along with the sailor? And he said, yes, it's the same, the same people. And then what about the restaurant that you were going to build? You know, did you make sure that's for young people so they don't keep eating all the time? So they'll take care of the restaurant. If you put a hotel here, which I recommend, it doesn't take, they're all really staffed with security and stuff, it doesn't take very long. We need the hotel to get the conference center to work. Okay? Conference center is not our idea, it's what it's the best use for the existing power plant, but they also have security. So one of the things you can do in your contract with them is say, you're in charge of the park at night. And don't tell me how you're crying in your parks because you do already find out. Okay, so, but, but the, 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 the hotel security is already taking care of that. So the little truck just has to go a little further. So that takes care of that. You see, so what we're trying to do is actually assign maintenance very carefully to entities that exist already. So, that's good. so there's software here that would be in our report that's not not designed. But we are careful that, for example, that the the sailing club actually has all the stuff they're taking care of that's actually contiguous. So they can actually say this is our stuff and that's their stuff. Um, let's see. Um, there's a this is a very large site, much larger than people think. It is actually, if you go from in St. Augustine, if you go from the park, the East West Park, Parkway in St. Augustine where Flagler College is, all the historic district fits in here. All of it. The entire thing, all the way to the port, just by scale. So it's just a lot of ground. Another thing, you know Clematis Street in, uh, in, in West Palm Beach? The entire of Clamata Street is not even this length. From the beginning to the library park is that length. 
this is so large that we were able to actually provide everything everybody wanted. Okay. You want that? No problem. You want that? No problem. This, that, everything. The only skill we did was to fit it together in a coherent way. We didn't have to say no, you can't have it. So one of the reasons this should work well is that I said, listen, don't be against anything because somebody in this city actually wants it. And it isn't a zero sum game that if you get it, they don't get it. Everybody gets it, there's enough room. And I think that's part of the reason that it has been so, so easy is that everybody's getting what they want. And then when somebody comes up and says, I want to kill the whatever, I said, don't do that. Because what's going to happen, somebody's going to, you're going to make an enemy and they're going to kill your thing. You see what I'm saying? Just, just say yes, don't say no, because everything fits. We still don't have an idea for a third of the land. After I put everything in, all the right size, this is this area here, the rear of the water treatment plant. I can't go. Based on everything everybody's asking for. Okay. So I keep challenging people and say, hey, more ideas. Now, I think what we're going to recommend is one thing. Why don't you mothball it so that the next generation gets to decide also what they want. And I think that's actually a good idea. You know, we don't, can't decide everything now. But a, general, uh, a young man came in this morning who has a, a business on Main Street that is employing a lot of young people, a very modern firm. And he said, what are you talking about? Look, there's no housing for us here. You know, don't, you know, enough of this entertainment stuff. What we really need here is housing that is cool and affordable. The hospital has 40 unfilled jobs. Your teachers are poached by other, by other school boards, easily poached because they, they, they're not getting they satisfactory housing. Uh, on and on like that, you know? The policemen, etc. And so, although somehow there are people who say, no, you can't have housing, it really does come up, frankly, that you should consider actually putting not affordable housing, because you know, twelve hundred dollars a month is not affordable. Okay, it's not affordable. It's people with jobs. Rental housing related directly to institutions of social utility like hospitals, policemen, and, uh, and school teachers. And I can't, I can't not put that out because it's the big elephant in the room. And in the end, we have, we're providing entertainment, entertainment, amusement, culture, sculpture, art, etc. But the elephant in the room is that you're losing gainfully employed people who eventually just really can't find decent housing. They're paid $1,200 for very mediocre stuff. Not homeless housing, not affordable housing, just decent, they, you know, cool, actually, cool housing. And so, as of this afternoon, after the meeting I had this morning, we're going to add housing to this. Because if somebody finally said, we've got to have this. By the way, if you look at the, the response on the, uh, these questionnaires that came out, it was third from bottom. Third from bottom. And I have to dig into that. Why are you against housing if you need it? And I think you probably need to develop steal everything. And, you know. So there's, it has, I have to admit, the housing in the 10, or 12, how many categories in any was it? Uh, I don't know, it's roughly 14. Okay, there are 14 categories, and housing was 11. So this is not popular, but, but actually people are asking for it. You gotta find that? Okay, these are the categories. No, it's even worse, look. This is the most popular. It's absolutely East Germany here. Okay, housing here. And environmental sensitivity topic. I'm not going to tell you that, but but this is actually what some what what comes up all the time. But someone and then finally somebody said, just settle in, grow up, and uh, and and show us what housing looks like. And I said, great, we'll do that. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Um, do we have a, an understanding of what age group was responding to these surveys? Do we? Age group? We do. I don't have it broken out now, but we could uh, break down the different age groups. I'm, I'm laughing to myself because many years ago when we came here, the kids called it zero heat. That's <laughs> and so this would look to the future and provide for that. Well, the future is uh, is what this is all about. I don't think this is going to, even if everything goes very smoothly, really this is going to be working properly for about five years. So that's the, you know, because just because you build one thing and the other thing, this is a very complex uh, piece of work. I think in five years, and uh, and by the way, it's five years to, in which you can see it working, and it should last 30. Now, why do I say 30? because nothing that I have ever done, incredibly cool, high value, everything I've ever done in my early years peaks and then starts going down. And then, and by the way, it's not just my stuff, it's Coconut Grove, Art Deco District, Miami Beach, you name it. It just goes like that. Brooklyn, <laughs> Manhattan, you know, hey, what about Buffalo? I mean, you can't blame me for stuff getting popular or unpopular. So I would say that you really, really have something that is going to work for 30 years. And the only way that's going to work is if we listen to the young people. And by the way, there's, uh, we'll see tonight whether they actually are going to take care of themselves. So far, they haven't. I mean, three people at a time, but that's it. They're not doing their job. So we'll see what happens. But if you remember what it was like, you might actually recommend some things, you know? Um, <laughs> like music might, at night might be nice. By the way, we now have technologies of music that doesn't bother us. Because actually what the neighbors were worried about, I knew, would be traffic lights and music. And what happens is the lights, ever since our very first project, the lights have been very low. With works aggregate from the sidewalks so they shine, even the moonlight. Uh, the speakers now, instead of being the old blaring, they're actually on a grid of little wires, little speakers that are just, they just deliver it right to your ear. So they're actually just, you know, 100 feet away, there's nothing, but it's loud. And the third thing is traffic, I've already told you, it's just gonna get worse, get used to it. Uh, and so that's such a part of the opposition is that they have three things that we said we've got answers. And then they began contributing and said, well, you know, it's not going to work with the, the skateboarders and, you know, and we've been responding to that. But they, everybody's playing the game really well. Yeah. Another question, I know when we were talking about, you know, the airport, there were flight, the FAA regulations, and this is a flight pad that right. comes over that. So we have to be aware of what restrictions are there. For the, for the, for the, um, for the, um, by the way, there are ideas that are not, you know, that most of that's not going to work. It's not, hasn't all been. Uh -huh. They're okay. just, I might have said the word that's a stupid idea, which is very upsetting to some people. But I did say that a couple of times. But actually, are you sort of seeing about the, the, the chimneys? The chimneys there? Yeah. Okay. Well, we have, um, we have some proposals. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's, there's one proposal is to take down the plant at zero cost. It's revenue neutral, and you get everything out. <coughs> it's already clean. The site's clean. Oh, you can find a consultant that says it isn't. You, want, <coughs> you can always find one. No, but it was cleaned out. But the chimney, so, so the chimney's moved down, or we can use the chimney, as you will see, to hold up tents, you know, these uh, triangular canvases, and have a rooftop, a rooftop cafe or, uh, or uh, um, bar you know, which is now very popular. And so you turn something in our renderings, we have renderings done that obviously it's almost hard to make it look bad. I mean, how can you have two chimneys with sales and not look good? And I also noticed one thing today, okay? I am always lost in this town. Mm -hmm. I'm not the only one, okay? And I'm always looking for landmarks of which there are very few. One of the great landmarks out of the three chimneys. Pretty interesting how much people actually count on that. And there's another thing I saw today. It's actually the first time I've been really been looking. But I went south to visit a trail. What's the name of it, Elena? Uh, the trail. I, I don't, what's it? 
Jungle Trail? No, not Jungle Trail. No. Just Orca. Green. Greenway. The Greenway. So whenever there's trouble, I go find out what the problem is. And I heard that there was actually uh, that many people didn't use that trail because of crime. Now crime may be that somebody was mugged three years ago. You know, you don't know. But so I went to see it. Delightful place. I'm sure that there's crime sometime or other because it's the kind of landscape where people can hide. But on the way back, I saw the chimneys, and they were fantastically beautiful angle. They're not lined up, they're not like that. Like, it's really a cool <coughs> you know, They're just lined up in a perfect way. And I think we can actually deal with an aesthetic. There have been people that have been calling for public art. They know that I've been pushing back. No public art. And the reason is, that every time we've been involved with public art and something gets placed, more people hate it than love it, for sure. <laughs> and it actually breaks up the community. It does not a unifying theme. It does not unify society. It just makes it, a lot of people make fun of each other. And of art. So I said no public art. We want our public artists. Okay? So we take the, under, the underneath of that highway and we get some public artists with something great with it. Or we take the three fireplaces, you know, the three chimneys, and say, okay, can we have a really good artist do something with it? Or we take the, what will necessarily, even when we change the facade of the plant, or the power plant, necessarily, it's, it's a chunk, okay? It's never not going to be a chunk of something. But wow, what a canvas. Or for example, we can take those tanks, and before you take them down the round tanks, they could be wonderful digital graffiti or something. So my feeling towards public art, and this is what I'm going to say, is that the public artist should be dedicated to making the existing facilities beautiful and not bring sculptures in that just upset everybody. By the way, no public art program is ever finished. That's, I mean, unless it's a statue of a puppy, which has <laughs> uh, image, it doesn't, you know, you can't even put a word here on top of the people anymore. So the puppies, and once you're done with the puppies and the cats, finish. So I don't recommend public art as a separate. I recommend public artists everywhere. You know? And there and I think I think this site actually needs a lot of it. Yep. What's the next step where we all get involved? Okay. You might have to help me on this. We make a very complete presentation Friday. My presentations are, are actually specialized through a speaking video, so I spoke about our process. Tonight you will see a presentation dedicated to you. Very oriented, I expect I'll get feedback. Um, the next step is we go away and there's a contract and then we send a, a, a document that's easy to use, that breaks it down into phases, and like I said, that hopefully will happen that we we'll move something forward. And then I think you should set up a series of, by the way, may I just say, you don't need to listen to anybody anymore. You just don't. You've got to vote. And by the way, here's something that I have learned. The highest point of acceptance of this plan is Friday night, which is the night I present. The longer you take, the more the opposition awakens and poisons the chalice. Okay, it is just every single time when you say, if any of you stands up and say, this is only the beginning, we will continue your stomp. And then you might as well look at the plan of what happens scenario one if nothing happens. 40 years of experience on this, okay? So you can take a little while Take what you must, but the longer you take, the less popular it becomes. Nothing has ever become more popular over time. So just like, just tell you. And I wish I had set this up earlier so the Friday night you could vote. Get it over with. Because you've got to, no more public engagement, done. It's like, there, I don't I don't believe there's ever been anything like this before, not in my 40 years in terms of public engagement. It's not even remotely close. You know, 10,000 people, 6,000. 
15 presentations, you know, it's enough. You just have to buckle down and vote. And so you have to take our plan and set it up for votes. Yes. So that's a very clear exit. I've, so I've got some questions of our planning director. Yeah. How, how is the property um, presently zoned? Okay. Well, so this gets a little bigger the, of the uh, process uh, beyond what is DBZ's contract. So just for the board's information, the, the property, you know, this was an industrial site. We go back to the city forefathers decided to put a power plant and a sewer plant on the river, but it was on the edge of the city. The other side. No, that's commercial. Yeah, I'm good. That's good. I, mean, I always keep focusing on the two main property. The power plant is industrial. Right. Well, industrial uses. Yeah. Right. And you got those on the river. So, and this was the edge of town at the time, you know, in the 1960s. No bridge. What? No and bridge. No bridge. Right. 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 No bridge. Um, and then you know the bridge gets built. Now it's in the center of town. And like Andres was uh, describing pre previously, all the growth is out in the county. This has become the center of the county. The um, the underlying land use in a comprehensive plan. This is the uh, power plant and the uh, <coughs> plant is government is government use. Land use. That's the land use. And then the zoning of the two properties is M industrial. The uh, old post office annex, that is commercial land use, future land use, and uh, C1A, I believe, zoning. So it's one of our commercial zoning districts. So nothing in what's been presented in this plan, I don't think anyone has presented any idea that keeps this government use and industrial. So I don't think that's what the community wants. So, so uh, are we renting the property to the Roman Club? Well, uh, well it's not, that's not getting that's <laughs> that's you know it, that's a public that's a public use uh, that's the, the city can do that. But the city owns. There's allowances for that in the, if you look at the M industrial. So, I mean, just that's the broader process here is that we're going to have a plan. Andres, they're going to deliver a plan. I believe it's in the contract. This will come to the planning board for your recommendation or the steering committee and planning board to a recommendation. And then in May, city, city council makes a decision on the plan. And that just sets the plan. From there, from whatever is that decision, now that you talk about there's five scenarios, everything from a public park to some sort of development. Whatever is the adopted plan will then have one thing, and I forgot to mention another thing, keep in mind the two, the power plant and the sewer plant are charter protected. So if it come, the plan comes back, and we want to move forward with something that is not solely in the public use, we're going to have to go through a, the city will have to go through a charter amendment process to, to change it. Then, then we'll have to come back and we'll have to do the, uh, we'll have to amend the, the future land use of the underlying zoning, because I don't think there's anything in these plans being suggested here that this stays government use and of course the zoning. And you know, and Andres, this firm is very well known doing uh, these mixed use projects and the type of plan they're gonna come back with. And we're gonna have be having as a board in late February, we're gonna be having a beginning discussion about this, about form-based code, uh, because we're already talking about it with the art village. So it's possible that this is not gonna be zoned with one of our traditional zoning districts, but it's gonna have its own set of development standards that follow the plan. And is any of this going to require a public referendum? Well, the Charter Amendment. Yeah. The Charter Amendment. Yes. Charter. Can we avoid it by staying within the constraints of well, that's Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if that's the scenario, that. sure. Yeah. That's so not staying within everything that anybody mentioned. For example, the, the building is, uh, the, uh, the power plant is 60 feet, the code is 50 feet. Yeah, a lot better to go to 60 and 60, but I'm going to yeah. yeah. make life really easy. Uh, uh, Andres, th there will have to be a referendum if yeah. any of the land is sold or leased for any other use other than recreation or green space. Yeah. So we is that a hotel? The hotel yeah. would be. That's right. correct. 
So, what about a fun hotel for example? <laughs> 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 I have to yield to the attorney. <laughs> I think we're headed for a referendum, so we're, we're, we're hoping for a plan that we can have and, and meet, meet the deadline of August to get on the November ballot. That's that's the plan. Is that an election? Yes, that, that's the 2020 election. This becomes a kind of uh, controversy related to the to the election, right? Well, they want to get it on this election because the turnout's better. So. That's what about trying to get the turnout to be worse? <laughs> wait, wait one year. You have to wait one year when okay. it's a non-presidential. Okay, got it. No, this is a problem. By the way, the plans not happening is normal. The normal thing is not plans happening, it's plans not happening. The famous on-the-shelf plan. And so we have to be careful uh, because the whole system is incredibly dysfunctional. Uh, and we just, you know, we were grown-ups, we know that. And so we have to we have to be careful and confront that. I have a question. If only the city residents can vote on this. Yes. How many people here live in the city? I'm just curious. So do you know how many of you don't know what you live in the city? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm wondering what percent from the city are represented at these meetings and what percent aren't. And then I go into the for lack of a better word, advertising, promoting, explaining, so that... Ma'am, I hate to interrupt you, but... No. <laughs> this, this is actually, this is part of our Shrek process, but this is an official workshop of our planning and zoning board. Okay. And... I sh I'll, I'll do it another time. Well, and this is the tables where the planning zone, the, the visitor should be. I'm I sorry. should be there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I love you. Right. Yeah, and then really, it's at the chair, at the chair's discretion if he's going to recognize the. the By the way, I, I find that actually the best stuff, the best, when I say things like this, it's just the function. Actually, everybody knows that. They tell me. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Can you give us yeah. some of your ideas here sure. so we can. Uh, sure. I will do it. Uh, do we have one of these here? Uh, the reason I haven't done this too much is that we're going to change it because of public input. Okay, the assumption is that you visited the power plant. Okay, well, the power plant is, uh, is not only a glorious space inside with real aesthetic things, but it's actually the size of the name of, name of St. Patrick and the National Cathedral. It's a serious piece of space and that actually this kind of uh, this kind of look of these lights and things happens to be very desirable today in terms of the style that's called steampunk in other words the young people are excited about this and in new york in very cool places one of the cases i make because people say this is all ugly is well but you know what it was done with love and an aesthetic guide by your ancestors that you paid for it. And it was just an America that actually still believed in the future. You know, the space program and power and all that. And it's actually an artifact of that period. What, uh, what, is, the, what is the structure? Uh, is it concrete block or is it? No, it's, a, it's actually rather well done steel. They really spent. Look at this. I mean, this is, you know, it's riveted. It's, it's got a lot of aesthetics to it, which is kind of interesting, because engineering now is a butler building and there's nothing left. I think what shocked me when I saw it is, wow, they really cared. You know, there was a, this is built to be for us, not the kind of stuff we build now. And so I make the case that this is actually a beautiful building, and actually the young people in particular like the way this looks, and then I, because that's controversial. I talk about things, let me, uh, is it coming up now? The, yeah, I'm going to have to show you something because we're on that topic. Okay, no. Okay, this is uh, Chelsea Market in New York. And we see actually have to build it to look like an old building industrially. That's the coolest market in New York. And then this is uh, similar, this is the Domino factory in uh, Brooklyn. And they actually take all the machinery and they paint it. They have an artist paint it. And it's sculpture and people love it. And this is uh, this is the most interesting. This is the power plant, very similar space in London. This is the Tate Gallery, the most visited uh, museum in Europe. 
and it's actually a power plant with a space like ours. And they use this for installation. So, you know, just to make the case, hey, this is actually cool. And uh, your famous brewery uh, is uh, actually, it's not just a beer, the atmosphere is terrific. And uh, you do have, this does have an ugly flag, the, the aqua. But even the aqua, I was noticing some gentlemen yesterday who were saying it was so ugly, and I said, well, why are you wearing that shirt? Which <laughs> <laughs> is exactly the same color. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, so. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Yeah. Okay, so um, there's a lot of technical stuff. Um, but here are the ideas. I'm going to go straight for the ideas. So the ideas are, this is just to remind people who haven't been there. By the way, the undercroft of the highway is both tall and nicely done. It's neat. Uh, sometimes up north they make them out of steel, and it's all leaking and falling apart and rusty, but this is, this is good quality. And it's got a, uh, you can use it for uh, sailboats and crossing under. It's not bad at all. Uh, this uh, next door, the plant, uh, these two are beautiful structures, the two tanks, which were for clean water. But this, this can't be saved. It's just a mess of pipes and little things and sewage and, you know, even people, yeah, there was no way to love that. That's not, that's been gone, right? This, this is important to note. This site is actually, doesn't form part of anything. It's just, it's a different site. And, um, we, we're going to draw five different scenarios, do nothing, parking lot, parking garage, sell it for office building, sell it for uh, uh, apartment for school teachers, 39 apartments fit there. And we're going to have a realtor come in and give us the price in our report. You can say, if I sell this, hey, we got three dollars, three million. So you know what, what the advantage is. But it really doesn't play a part. Well, the one scenario will be, let's build a parking garage and a bridge over it, and I'll give you the price for that. It's yeah. going to be the there. Did you mention the before? Not there. Is that this is the this is the crossing? This is Flagler College. Okay, and this is getting to the the, the port. It's just up here, and this is the site. <coughs> so you see, historic St. Augustine. Oh, what you what you visit actually fits here. <coughs> this is huge. Not the same site, we just got a bridge thing on, but, but generally speaking, it's a formidable site, which has made my job really easy because everything fits, you know. Okay, this is one of the inputs that was most creative. One of your residents said, why don't we just put shed buildings from the road to the to the to the water and just, you know, good old Florida shed buildings and just make them available to incubate businesses all the way down. And that's definitely a good idea because the young people want to incubate businesses. What they need is a building that's inexpensive and that's pre permitted. You know, that they can actually start making cookies and selling them without, without too much trouble. So that's part of the program we're going to show you. That idea was uh, one of your, he's not even an artist, he just had through it. Okay, so this is the plan. So I'm going to show you this just to show you how much we presented this morning. We move the, there are many entrances here, we move it to the far as possible, we move the entrance away from the intersection, and we always try to get the parking out of the way. Okay, this is this much parking, and of course, over here, this is all this is good for is parking, because it's just, it's just the highway. This is the plant. The plant has this fantastic, the power plant, fantastic nave, of incredible length. Then a whole, an area here, of low ceilings and pipes and all this stuff. That is actually, if you pull it out, it's very difficult to run maybe if you pull it out, it's expensive. So we're proposing just putting a glass line here and a glass line here and, and embedding it as a kind of art piece. All these fantastic pipes. It's actually the least expensive thing you can do. Put it in there, done. And it's visible. If this becomes, if this tall room becomes a conference center, you're looking at this fantastic art piece. You know, like, whoa, this is special. On the other side, we put hotel rooms, just one layer of hotel rooms, but the view is great. <coughs> Here, it's not higher than the building, you don't see it. 
the hallway happens to also look into that incredible space, so you have the best hotel hallway experience on Earth. And these people would run that in the conference center, for which there's been a lot of call. They don't have to, sometimes they say we need a conference center, but most of what I hear about is there's not a, there are no rooms to meet, there are no rooms to party, there's no room. That's just a theme that conference centers provide. Like this, for example, we have sometimes we meet here, sometimes we meet there, but we don't have enough room, even for this kind of thing. Okay, then over here, uh, so you come in, you drive, there's a drop off at the hotel, and here you get the sheds that your neighbor drew, those inexpensive sheds, except they really don't fit straight. So we, anyway, so we don't want to build a thousand. So we broke them up into small single story buildings. Very picturesque, very much like the aesthetic is like, uh, what's the restaurant you love across the road at the park? Riverside. 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 Florida. Which actually doesn't have to look good. We still build that way. You know, we build the fabric and so forth. Here's the sailing club, which is a nice big building, and they can raise the money or they have the money. So it terminates the vista here. They want this for their sailboat program, and they also want the restaurants so the kids don't have to be all the time. You know, Saturdays, oh, now we have to feed the kids. So they have a uh, kid restaurant, which is portable. And because there's been a call, an ambiguous call for more restaurants, even by people who own restaurants downtown, because restaurants draw restaurants. There are two, three other restaurants at different price points. Okay. Grilled cheese for kids, more expensive grilled cheese, more expensive grilled cheese. And then for the people who have yachts, who don't know where to go, who have no destination except apparently up and down the lagoon, you know, they go pretty far to find the waterfront. We, get, we have a more expensive, even more expensive route. Um, and this is a harbor which, which is where they come in. These are the boats that are looking for a destination. So the sailors are here, the boats are here. The skate park is here because it's close to the sailing club that manages it. And here we have, there's a call for an environmental statement about the landscape. People say, oh, keep nature, nature. Well, the bad news, or maybe the good news, is that nature is shot. Okay, this is compacted, destroyed, so we restore nature. And it's not going to make a big deal of difference because, you know, this morning a preservation group just bought another 100 acres. But symbolically it's very important. You know, people, the kids, it's good for the kids to know. So we, this is a restored wetland with kind of ferns on the side. Because nature here was not flat near the beach. It was actually dunes and so forth. If you've seen the golf boat course at Windsor, uh, what Bobby Trent Jones did is he, that was flat, he restored, he looked at the aerial photographs, he restored the dune lines with the weird lakes and then put a golf course in it. So it looks like, like a Scottish course that's built from nature, it's really skillful. And so then the idea is to get somebody really good to kind of restore a kind of lagoon wetland. This is a, this is growing the seeds, but it's just a slope, just a grassy slope where you can you can look, listen to music. And then, as I said, the other restaurants now over here. By the way, the, the, the traffic stops here. This is a service road. This is a pedestrian road, which is differentiated. And then you come to the other side. By the way, this is a miraculous element of the people who <laughs> wanted to come over <laughs> on golf course. And of course, they said, it's got to be one way. Because <laughs> we want to go to their place, we don't want them here. So, Madam, you have nothing interesting for anybody. You <laughs> 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 worry. <laughs> they're not going to come. Unless they're lost, and then they'll turn around. <laughs> now, here, there's actually a wetland emerging, a beautiful mangrove swamp. Mangroves are emerging. It looks really good already. They're growing like that. And so the, 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 the sailing club with bombs are kayaks here which is, you know, rowing and so forth. And it's just, just perfect for them. So they'll take care of this as well. Okay, so this is the, this is the, this is the sailing club. These are the two tanks, and one of the ideas, which I'll show you later, 
is to actually turn them, just add a kind of lobby in between, I'll show you that later. And one of the ideas was to actually have the meeting hall for your important meetings of the town council. Um, not the whole city hall, but you know, that room is really out of date. I've actually, it, that room is so bad. <laughs> and actually, I found out that it was designed by Public Works in 19, whatever, 63. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute low point of architecture history. Like that. Okay. Yeah. Where the poor person is standing there pleading their case and you're looking down at them. You know? Paternalistically, it's horrible. The light is bad. Um, you have to sneak past the police. <laughs> I do think you need a meeting hall. That, by the way, would be a much more friendly place. By the way, the, the best meetings are circular anyway. They're not like that. Okay. And, uh, and it could be used for other places. I mean, people need to have meetings all the time. And so we said, this is such a beautiful structure, we can do it. But also other ideas. Uh, it could be from climbing walls, you know, uh, black box theater, all sorts of things. I was going to say something about Main Street. So I know where trouble comes from, so I asked the Main Street, and I told them, I said, this will inevitably take business away from you. Okay, I just want to put that on the boat. Okay. And they said, actually, it won't. The more restaurants, the more business we get. And some of them, three young people said, we have restaurants over there, we'd like to open here as well. Okay, so it's very clear that this isn't going to work badly. I think, I think you owe them um, some of the 21 million. You know, just think of them together. You know, because really, right? And you think of them together, it's, it, they're, they're part of Bureau, et cetera. Everything coming here, like this place is so much help, and that one on their own, I think it, it just makes sense. Um, I mean, we might even put that in, okay? Like this is, you know, you're working together, it's a twin place, Main Street is emerging, and suddenly, Central management, best architecture in the world, all the advertising, you know, like there's some something asymmetrical about it. This, uh, no ideas yet, except this morning an idea did come in. And so here you see, I'm going to show you some more stuff. Okay, so this is the plan. It's very early drawing with the hotel rooms in front, which actually no one can see. That it doesn't change the vision of anybody. Uh, this is the plant uh, with the sails. Very rough. These, somebody said put windmills on them. And this is the kind that, you know, the ones that twirl. Which actually, you know, everybody says we need the light from the boat. We need the fireplaces that we like. You can actually put a floodlight on these things. And actually, it's a beautiful, it's almost like a flame, you know, at night. And it becomes well known. These look good no matter how you draw them. And then we have a, a facade that inevitably has to look kind of like the existing one. We've added windows, but what happens is they have to look the same because you can probably get historic tax credits to renovate it, which is a big help, but it has to kind of look like what you have. And, uh, and then the top of the garage, you build the garage, there should be doors out for the meeting rooms so they can actually get some air and you can have sunset parties. Okay, so that's what you see here. And down here are the little small things happening. This hasn't changed that much. It hasn't changed the footprint at all. No. Well, we've increased uh, 24 feet for the hotel rooms. Okay. But that does nothing, that doesn't want to start that here. No, at all. Uh, and they actually want you to use it. Mm -hmm. like that. Now, something about the 24 feet. We could shove the rooms into the existing structure, but that's much more expensive, mm -hmm. right? So it's better to just leave it, not mess it up so much. The hallway is beautiful, and uh, it just is. And this is what we do now. You know, instead of pulling out, you know, the big, if you've seen the big generators, the turbines inside, instead of pulling them out, they're monsters. We just build the wooden floor above, clean wooden floor, and you can look down at the glass. Um, so it's, it's really inexpensive to do this. Uh, this is, these are attempts at the facade. I think you can get the look. Uh, these are the existing, okay, this is the plan. 
this is the existing hallway, the incredible hallway. This, these are the, these are the, this is the dense stuff that you can't even get in. Very cool to look at. And then these are the hotel rooms. Okay. So they're not that expensive. We're trying to keep the cost down. This is the section through it. This is the dense stuff that you can't even draw. By the way, we, they lost the drawings. <laughs> so we reconstructed this from photographs, but they found the drawings this morning. We found the next part the spot. Okay, this is, uh, now these are the two tanks. And almost everything you do there, um, it's almost impossible to do something that doesn't look cool. You know? And one of the things we did is we kept the two tanks, by the way, even have a dome on top. I mean, it's not even flat. These aren't the old gas tanks. These are, these are made with pride. Did I tell you already the best from second best contract, concrete contract. And so we put a lobby that's glass and then a porch. You know, um, all the structures there. And, uh, and then you can do something inside. Of course, you can floor plan that meeting halls. You can demolish it, obviously. That's going to be a proposal, OK? But on, on most people that have seen it would really love it. Uh, now, um, something that came up yesterday was uh, um, holding pattern. Like, for example, we're not gonna, we don't know what these are. This is the, this is the stuff nobody has ideas for. One of the things you can do for income of the community is, for example, have an RV park. You know, for 10 years before you decide. Loss of income, the mobile home people don't mind, it's like that. You're bothering nobody and you're getting income. And so I think we can't sneeze at income, you know? Because the other thing is, a wedding chapel in, in our towns like Windsor and, and Seaside and so forth, the wedding chapels do four or five weddings a day and a weekend at $4,000 each. So, you know, a normal weekend is $20,000 income to the city to maintain this thing and, uh, and keep the hotels full in the off season. So that's a good idea, you know, because it helps maintain it. So this, this is an RV park would be interesting. Now, by the way, you can write, you can write the standards of what kind of RV you want, but, but you know, why not? This is an RV that we designed, actually, for, uh, which was uh, in the International Building Show in Las Vegas. Uh, it's actually to make RVs look, uh, the, the RVs don't need a machine, uh, a truck. They can actually be a house that moves, and you move in, move out. That's a two-bedroom unit. This could actually serve your nurses and, and teachers for a while. And by the way, this is a private sector. You just lease it to somebody, and, and you collect You could collect, collect this on rent. Uh, we're going to show you all the stuff that happened next door, nice drawings of the, the site on the southwest. You know, and you will get five. You will get five of. Uh, Five options with numbers, approximate numbers if you sell it, etc. Oh, that, that's, that's not a really good rendering of an apartment building for 39 okay. apartments. Uh, the, these things are actually, yes, you know, it's industrial and everything, but it's actually more recent a lot of the time. And uh, they'd be cleaned up, but you know, we have the pens on them and so forth. So for us to make the case, they're actually very cool. Or you can spend money taking them down. That's kind of what it looks like. Now, uh, what happened uh, this morning, two things happened. A young man with an interesting business downtown said, get serious about housing. That's really our biggest problem, not this entertainment stuff, so we will survive. Our stock and trade is beautiful for local neighborhoods. But we use that as an option. And the other thing, then we got a lot of pressures to separate the music venue from the skating venue from the environmental venue. The plan you just saw had everything together, right? The environmental, you know, the wetland, the skating park jutted into it, and the city, and we were like, none of this works. You know, 
split. I thought it kind of worked, but what I guess it kind of is funny if you split all three. It's, it's sur surprisingly different. They're just in each in a different square. I know you're a little bit off. All these people are invested in it, so we like the plan already. <laughs> well, if you listen, people said they're, they're compatible, so we're preparing to do the plan for the first time. Unless we're done already. What is it? Can anybody photograph the plan? Uh, one. So this is after lunch. We have a new plan. And so you get, I think people are going to say, um, it, it's not that you don't listen. It's just that we do actually, when there are when there ideas that make sense, um, we do listen. You know? Okay, so this is what this is. <laughs> in the prior plan, we brought you in here. By the way, I think I told you that this intersection has to be as far as possible from this one because of the mess it makes and it's great and right up. So instead of in the last one, you came over here and you brought, came over here and you got into the hotel, right? And then you walked down. In this one, you enter right here and you stay there. You don't go around the parking garage and there is an open view of the water with the prior one that you have. That means no launching ramp? What? No launching ramp up there? There is a no launching ramp in this one. But somebody's gonna want it. Mm -hmm. The fact that I, I have to draw it somewhere. <laughs> uh, what I'm proposing now is that the launching ramp, instead of fighting it out with the neighbors, fight it out with the... Yeah. <laughs> the same way club. But there's a fight. <laughs> okay, my recommendation may be that you just kill the damn thing and then they drive across their way for the law. Okay? But don't let this, this is the single most contentious item, don't let it hold anything else. But anyway, you come in, the, the chapel was very popular, you know, with a long view to the east, and it's actually on, on one of the firms. And so you come in like this, and you turn around and park. The rest of it is pedestrian. You know, these are the sheds that we spoke about. And you arrive here to the square. On this side, gracing the hotel is the environmental, you know, wet, the roof of the wetland. And here, adjacent to the, to the restaurant of the kids is the, is the, a skating park with its own actually flat playing field. You know, like not, not, it's not environmental anymore. You just go out there and run flat in the grass. So we separated the grass because there's a call for both kinds. Some people want the environmental reconstruction, some people want a flat grassland park to run around in. So we put it there. And then we separated the music, which is now here, right? And the three restaurants that are on the water, now you can actually sit on their decks and listen to the music. <laughs> and then the boaters who come across the way can also stay in their boats and listen to the music, nice. which, is, which didn't happen before. And this is the sailing club. They didn't want to be here because it's so cool to look at all the little sails. So they would be in the second floor looking at it and said, no, you can't have everything. It turns out you might be able to have everything because we put them here. Now, they now control all of this, and they actually don't necessarily want their boats underneath. They want to be able to build sheds here, which actually isn't the highway anyway, right? So instead of having our cool little walkway near the highway where it's noisy, we have a cool little walkway over here. And then you come across, and nothing much has changed on this side. But it's, it's, it's the same components, but everything's split in three different orange slices. So people can actually, you know, I think it's very responsive to what we're calling for. Um, what is there that in the north corner? This? Yeah, that's, right. that's the chapel. Yeah. The wedding chapel. And, and that was actually something that people wanted? Totally, yeah. Mm. yeah. Because actually there's two things. First of all, the income. Second of all, it fills the hotels and the restaurants. They're very, very profitable. That footprint there is the size of this room. So, Nile, 
And uh, as somebody told me, a southern bride demands this much water yeah. to show off. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make it shorter. <laughs> So, did you do that too? No, I was going to say the father was always money. Yeah. You didn't have one of those money? Yeah. Tell them how beautiful your chapels are. Oh, okay. You can Google our chapels. Yeah, they're gorgeous. We have, we, all our towns, you know, like Windsor. You saw the Chapel Windsor and the Chapel of Seaside and all that. They're really beautiful. They get prizes and they're really good investment. People say, how can you afford a chapel? Well, it's an income. And they require almost no maintenance. Just you just make make appointments. And I think this would be a really good use there, particularly since you guys have an off season, you know, which and it just fills the hotel and the restaurants. We also put the expensive restaurant is actually closest to the chapel. This is the one that so you can actually just walk across and have your banquet. These are these are the three restaurants at different price points. Very important. That actually that everybody feel welcome. And I think the analogy of the four dollars five dollar lunch, the ten dollar lunch, the fifteen dollar lunch, because your community has an incredible disparity away from it. Everybody should feel should feel very close. Yeah. On, on the disparity, you, I don't see the residential this one that you were mentioning, but if you put it given really this proximity to the river, uh, we were talking earlier about so mid Atlantic down here um, affordability. For the teachers and the policemen, yeah. uh, there is still reasonable, I guess it's all from your point of view, housing in the county uh, and, and further away. And if you build residential here, you, you said earlier you always wanted to have a stand. Uh, yeah. It comes, but you never it does. It. Eventually, how do you maintain it at affordable well, prices at that location? Well, the students, um, I don't think we can actually politically get acceptance for housing other than public, you know, for public service that are not in low housing. That's why I present that. It's not a good idea to have everybody at a $40,000 salary guy. You know, so yes, the ideal is to have more of a range. Uh, like I said, it was an after lunch idea. We have this terrible problem that everything we do gentrifies. And then we get personally punished, even though every other American city is, you know, gentrifying also. It's just what's happening. But, uh, and I think we can just propose uh, just a first-rate little piece of mixed use urbanism and see how it flies. Especially in the absence of any other idea. Because it's not like this is full of ideas. This is waiting for an idea. And by the way, pick up what do you call pickleball courts? Yeah. That's the level of idea. You want to have controversy? What? <laughs> it's like, what? Even if we put them in, there's still space left. So, uh, and now we can also put in just one big soccer field and get it over with. But that's like, that doesn't, that serves a very small contingency. So that's just an easy out. I think that housing is the best idea. And my job is to, uh, to try, look, my job is to bring everything to life and then see how it flows. Yeah. As your contract, will you have a fifth scenario? On? Well, I think that your idea, I'm thinking it'd be great to have it in a sealed envelope behind breaking place in case of emergency. Yeah. Um, I think that I've actually, um, I actually persuaded people to say, if you're interested in what I actually think, that's the fifth scenario. And I will definitely do that. Yes. Yeah. And then you can blame me. Can I spur? I don't agree with Mr. Blonde. And then I, you know, and then I don't, I don't run for office for any of those. By the way, it tends to be, the reason why scenarios are so brilliant <laughs> is that it's actually everybody's best idea. You know, it's like, oh, let's put that one with this one and so forth and then we'll avoid troubles. So it tends to, to sound, you know, oh, this is such a good one. Well, it's because everything else is a hodgepodge. And uh, so I make this election, you know, and it's not that hard to do. So there will be a scenario, all of which will appear in others, but put together in one. How much? Is this, is this legal? Or? Oh, Mr. Chairman, I know you've got a meeting in no, just a few fine. minutes. I do. Um, we need to wrap this up yeah. so that you can get your meeting. Yeah. Um, you get to speak tonight. Yes, and, and as far as, unless the, the board feels otherwise, um, 
and we'll take a vote on it if you like. I mean, I don't think this is a charrette. This is a workshop, a workshop. and we're, you have plenty of opportunities to uh, ask questions. You certainly have had our, and you will also have an opportunity to come to our planning zoning meetings and, and express your opinions. Yeah, there's plenty more meetings left. No, we do look at the schedule. Okay. Great. Okay. I do have one question. Would you estimate, could you estimate at this point, how much housing you would put in there? No. Okay. Uh, but I will say one thing. Okay. We don't want to upset people with, I think what's going to work is two stories with an occasional third for bride. Okay? The density that we end up with is often five units to the acre, but fantastically low. Yeah. And what controls it is the parking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once you park, you know, it's, it's what I call the American density. Why does it always end up five units to the acre unless you have public transit? So I think we can actually divide it, and I could be making it. people up. ask, you know, yeah. Have some kind of answer. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, they also have to love it because even if it's three of us in the acre, they don't love it. They'll, they'll kill it. So um, it's our job to say, "Oh, that's really cool." And um, but it should be rental because you know if you have an ongoing problem with people getting their command and so forth. It shouldn't be it shouldn't be sold to a developer. Okay. Well, I have been told by quite a few people, without contradiction, that the city shouldn't be doing this. That it should be lease land and that the management should be private sector. Enterprise. Enterprise and also they they actually they just do a better job. You know, because they, they have they really have um, you know, presumably that's where their income comes from. But you need to control it. And I, 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 I know things that can go wrong and I will write that up, you know, uh, in the in the in the deal you make with the various people here, there are things that I know can go wrong. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure. Yes. Uh, Friday night is the last one. Friday night is the last one. No, 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 the last one. Tomorrow night is Work Island Village. It's where? Oh, it's Work Island Village. Tomorrow, no, it's tonight. No, it's tonight. Walking Tree. No, let me up. Walking Tree. And the, okay, there's two more. Okay, and what is Friday? Is in the evening, in your evening, so in terms of the evening, tonight is walking tree for the it's geared towards the young professionals, and and then tomorrow at six thirty is at Orchid Island Brewery, and that one is designed for the beachside, you know, Central Beach residents right. across the river uh, residents, and then the final presentation, encourage everyone to come out, is at First Presbyterian Church, uh, the McCaffey. Uh, Hall, the back part of the and church. That's Friday? That's Friday at 6 30. It's still called the final. Yeah. You evening, uh, your Friday evening entertainment. It's the final presentation. Uh, uh, don't come Friday because we're working all day. That's, we, we're, we close the door so we can get things done. Yeah, there's only. Uh, I mean, don't come Friday day. Yeah. Okay. Come to the dice. Sorry, yeah. just come Friday. Yeah. The Presbyterian Church is at 6 30. 6 30 somewhere. And that's the final presentation. Right, that's what the contract says, final. And then there is the presentation of the report. And when's that going to be? That's in May. So we, in the contract, we expect two months for them to go back, finalize all the, the information, to draft the report, and then the final report will be presented in, in May to city council. It increases the prestige. <laughs> they can be taking longer. And when do you anticipate this to be that scene? Well, actually, since the final presentation to councils in uh, the beginning of May, it's sometime in April is when this uh, would come to this board, the steering committee and planning zoning board for recommendations. Okay, I'm going to try and get it earlier. I asked Jason previously yeah. if, if there was a possibility of, of, of having a tour of the power plant um, as a board. As a board, um, is that possible? Or is there interest? We'll have to work out some logistics because it is the board. We'll have to do the same thing we did with the steering committee. There's just some logistics about the public sun, uh, sunshine law uh, doing it. Could the board go up to the top? 
<laughs> Same thing the steering committee did. <laughs> we got a right. We do have videotape on the website of, of the view from the top. that big space, you have to feel it. It's really great. So we'll work out arrangements for that. Um, but that, that uh, and we'll, we'll get back in touch with you. Or, you know, we'll pull the board, what's a good day, and we'll figure out what works. But that will help you notice it's a public meeting. There's certain, there's certain public meeting procedures we have to go through. And thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you.